Well, hey guys, today we're going to be doing a hard drive replacement, uh, an M.2 replacement for one of my clients. Um, the model for this HP he's got is the 14-CF0008CA, as you can see here. So just follow my cursor for the instructions, which is pretty simple here. Um, I try to make it as easy as I can just to show people how to do the, uh, the, the teardown. So with this one here, just face your screen on your table and... As you can see here, I kind of removed the strips ahead of time because I was kind of ahead of myself and very busy today. So if you look at these two gray strips here, one would be covering this section here. Just follow my cursor. And then this one here would be covering these three screws right here. So these three screws at the bottom, once you remove the strip and uh, the two strips here, there's there's three screws at the bottom and there's actually one on the, the top strip. And then if you look carefully here at the top left and the top right here, there are two shorter screws. So... The first five that you see here that you'll be removing, which is three under the strip and then two under this strip, they're all the same length. So you can all keep them together. So the, just remember the only two different screws that are shorter are the two at the front, which is at the top left and top right. So it's pretty simple. So I'm pretty sure you won't forget how, you know, the orientation of where the screws need to go. So to start off the installation here, or sorry, the disassembly here, face your screen down on the table exactly how you see mine and then just basically point you know, your, uh, the keyboard part, you know, straight up to the top. And if you look carefully here, this is where I did the first score with my, with my thumbnail, which is pretty easy to pry open. And I'll give you a quicker look here, a closer look. And if you just basically run your, you know, your, your thumbnail from left to right here, you know, uh, you'll be able to run it also to the far left hand corner and actually open up the whole corner. If you, you know, want to use a pry tool, you can do exactly the same way. Just basically run your pry tool from the right side into the far left, and then it, it comes off pretty easy. And then I'll show you how to do the sides here because the sides was a little bit difficult to get this one off. It didn't really want to open up quickly because I tried just running my my thumbnail to the corner here and going down, it still wouldn't pop. So then if you want to place it carefully so that you don't damage anything, um, now this time you just stand it up this way so instead of the screen on the table you're going to be standing up where the the corner of the screen and the keyboards at you know at the bottom end you know it doesn't matter the orientation of this here you can put on the table or this here so i just have the uh the the left side on the table here so once you do that and i'll go to a closer shot here what i did was I actually i ran my pry tool here out to this corner and then i start running it down so as you can see it pops open pretty easily so if you run your pry tool, just run it right straight to the corner, at to the bottom here, to the left side, and you do exactly the same way as on the other end, and then it'll be easy to pry open. And once you've done that, there's one more little section, which is the back part of the laptop, because I tried lifting it up, but it still wouldn't pop up easily. So what you do is you use your pry tool, you know, starting either from the left here or the right side, which I started from the right side here. All you do is literally just pop your pry tool underneath, and as you can see, if you look carefully, there's actually a raised section here because I put the pry tool to pop it up because there's a bunch of clips here that are that's holding it in place. And, you know, the last thing you want to do is not lift it up from here and then just force it to pop up because you can't break it. So best thing to do is use a pry tool and then just gently pop it from underneath. Just stick it underneath and just pop it upwards and you'll, you'll start hearing the click. It'll actually unlatch itself. And it's just pretty simple. And then once you have that all done from right to left or left to right, and then you can just easily lift it up as you can see here. So once you've removed the cover here, this is what a system will look like. And I didn't realize this customer here actually had an M.2 and also a two and a half inch, you know, uh, mechanical drive. So if, if you look at it carefully here, this is where his M.2 is. And this is the single screw that you will need to uh, to remove it, you know, uh, to, to replace it. Because because uh, I, I didn't realize that his system here, because I thought he only had one M.2, so I, I thought... That one was the defective drive, but what it ended up being was actually this mechanical drive here was the actually the bad one because as soon as I put my ears close to it when it was powered on, it was actually clicking and stuff, you know, uh, you know, clunking, sorry. And, you know, he had more than one issue because his primary issue, which he didn't tell me about, was that his CPU fan was completely dead. So when the, when the, at, at my first boot up, my first power up, I actually had the error where it says that there's no CPU fan detected. You know, and this fan was completely dead. It wasn't spinning. Even though it looked 100% clean and everything, it was completely dead. It wasn't spinning at all. So if you want to be able to remove this drive without damaging anything, if you see here, this is a SATA cable here. And if you look at this black clip here, this is where you will actually just use your fingernail and then just basically stick it underneath and just, and just, just lift it from underneath and just pop it up. And once you see that this black latch here, if you look carefully, 
If you once you lift it up, you can actually just pull the hard drive cable, that little blue section here, just pull it outwards to the right. And then you can actually just easily lift up the, the hard drive by just grabbing this SATA area here and then just lifting it up. And then you can just remove this connector here. So just be careful, you know. The other way is you can actually remove it here and not remove that, but I would rather you do it the proper way where if you end up trying to lift this up and then somehow you end up tearing this apart, it's just better to play safe and then just, you know, lift up this black latch here, just put your fingernail underneath and just pop it up, remove the cable by holding down the blue section here, and then the whole hard drive will come apart. And then you can easily just slide this by wiggling it from the top here or the, the bottom here, just wiggling it out to the left side here. If you look at my cursor here, just bring it out this way. And then you can just replace a hard drive there if that is the issue. Because in this situation here, he had a bad CPU fan. Also, his mechanical drive, the two and a half inch hard drive here was defective. And I, I don't know why, you know, this, you know, laptop was rigged with a 16 gig SSD, which is just really pathetic because it, it just made no sense, you know. So I, I what I ended up doing with this client here, I took out this hard drive. This one here is garbage. Um, what I did was I ended up buying a 500 gig Samsung, you know, uh, the 980 series for him. So I'm just waiting for uh, the, the new hard drive to come in. But, you know, I just remember too that, you know, if you're, if you want to, you know, be careful, I mean, you don't always have to do it. I don't always do it, to be honest with you. But if you want to be safe to make sure that there's no current going through the system, you can easily remove this battery here. You'll see there's one screw there, one there, one there, and one right in the corner. So there's four of them in total. So bottom left, top left, in the middle, and the, the top right-hand corner. So once you remove the four screws there, you can easily just lift up the, the battery from this section here, lift it up, and then just pull it out towards you to the bottom here and then you can easily remove it and then remove your SSD here if you want to upgrade it or replace it you know with an M.2 or you know if some people uh, I mean it, it's pointless to you know uh, you know if you're going to upgrade them both you're better off to get an SSD two and a half inch you know from Amazon and put a two and a half inch SSD here a Samsung or a Crucial or you know a, a Western Digital Black Series or something and then also get yourself an M.2 with a faster read write speed about at 5,000 to 7,000 megabits per second, you know, um, cause you know, they, they go as low as about, I think 2,500 to 3,000 megabits, but for the same price or $10 more, you might as well go with a 5,000 to 7,000 megabits per second on that. So remember when you're buying your M.2s, look for the 5,000 to 7,500 megabits per second on the read and write speed, cause then you'll actually have the optimal read and write speed and then your system will boot much faster. And it'll also, you know, uh, boot into the windows much faster and it just do everything a lot faster than a 3000 megabit per second um you know so so just remember that right so i mean you know this is the whole uh you know you know upgrade here or the replacement procedure and let's say if you did want to put another stick of ram as you can see here this is a secondary dim slot ddr dim 2 the dim 2 so if you want to buy more ram you can actually add more if you want to here so and, and this is your best opportunity to upgrade more ram if you want to do it at the same time as replacing your hard drive and stuff just order everything from amazon and and just make sure that it is compatible because sometimes if you're sometimes the ram sticks are sold as a as a set you know the reason why they do that too a lot is because if you end up mixing the brand here that that is a that is a you know the the oem part with a with another crucial or ocz or whatever brands you know or azen and stuff sometimes it might be incompatible then it'll cause other virtual memory manager errors or blue screen errors and reboots and stuff like that so if you are upgrading find out what the max is i don't know what the max is this one because i wasn't doing the upgrade for this but yeah just just check out the specs for your laptop and just make sure that you check to see if it's eight gigs max on each dim i'm pretty sure these ones here are probably 16 each probably um, you know, but then you can just go from there. I mean, if you max out your RAM here and put in an M.2 that reads up to 7,000 to 7,500 megabits per second and get a, you know, Samsung or a Crucial for right now on Amazon, it was on sale for like $56 with tax Canadian for a 500 gig. You know, if you want a one terabyte, it's probably $30 more or whatever, but yeah, just do the upgrades, but don't get yourself a mechanical drive to replace it because this is a crap drive, you know, and I hope that information helps. And, you know, I mean, you guys have any questions and stuff just just post it on the uh you know the uh the questions and the comments and stuff and you know you guys have a good day take care